for the introduction. And uh, I think the best way to motivate for today's talk is to review people's work on the singular cohomology of locally symmetric spaces. OK, so we let g to be a reductive group over q. such that the real point of its center is compact. So I want to note that this is not a necessary condition for the results we are going to talk about today. But it just helps to eliminate the complication in the notations and help us to focus. So in this talk, we use small Gothic letters to denote complexify the algebras for both algebraic groups and uh, Lie groups. OK, so I let k to be an open subgroup of a maximal compact of the real points of g. OK. And well, so the x the quotient is a uh, Riemannian symmetric space attached to the group G, which is not necessarily connected. And I let K to be in a complexity by the algebra. OK, so now I let this bold face K to be a neat compact open subgroup. Of the finite elliptic points, of G and E to be a finite dimensional complex representation of the real points. So this data give rise to the locally symmetric space HSK, which is defined to be such a double quotient. OK, this is locally symmetric space. And also, the representation E give rise to a local system descent from a trivial local system. What else? By KK times E. OK, this is the. Sorry, local system. OK, so we can consider the cohomology of this local system. So only one hand, it turns out that these are finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And moreover, there are hack operators acting on it. So the right way to think of this action is to notice that these cohomology groups form a direct system, like indexed by this compact, uh, compact open subgroups K. So, uh, and in that direct system, all the maps are injection. So I take M to be the direct limit of this cohomology of local systems, then M is a G of AF module, which encode all the information of the hack actions. And also, we have its K fixed part is exactly the cohomology at level K. So this is an admissible G of AF module. So now I ask the following question. I let M1 to be any irreducible G of AF subquotient of M. But 
then the question is, if m1 is isomorphic to the funny part of an automorphic representation of g, so does there exist automorphic representation pi with pi infinity tensor pi f of g such that m1 is isomorphic to pi f. OK, so we see that in a case where our locally symmetric space is a true variety, and the representation E comes from an algebraic representation of G, then like suppose, also suppose we have all the desired Ishiro Shumar relations. Then this question essentially asks if the etal cohomology of the Shumar variety with twisted coefficients as scalar representations are automorphic. So it expects affirmative answer to this question. And such an answer is given by the work of Borel and Franco. Yes. OK, so the way we get such an answer is that we actually have a much more precise description of this cohomology of local systems. So the standard treatment of this cohomology is first to tensor the local system with the Durham complex of the locally symmetric space to get a fine resolution of it. So not. this is a fine resolution. And it's well known that the global sections of this complex can be identified with the standard complex of a relative Lie algebra cohomology. So these global sections are isomorphic to home k from i wedge product of g mod k to c infinity gq mod g of a mod both this k tensor e. OK, so this is exactly the i term in the standard complex. And also, this d is the differential in the complex computing the relatively algebra cohomology. So it follows that this cohomology can be expressed as the GK cohomology of this space of smooth functions with coefficients in E. And the theorem of Franke, which was previously conjectured by Borel, says that the inclusion of automorphic forms inside this space of smooth functions into the whole space um, OK, I should take k funny part to make it a GK module. Induce an isomorphism on GK cohomology with coefficients in E. And if we take, so therefore we have expressed the 
core module of local system with as relatively algebra cohomology of like the fixed part of automobile representation. And if we take direct limit with respect to k of both sides, then we have m is isomorphic to the GK cohomology of an autonomous representation. OK, so the affirmative answer to that question follows from here. Oh, so ultimate representation, I mean like irreducible g k g of a f sub quotient of the space of ultimate form. Okay, so now let's have another look at the case where the local asymmetric space is a smart variety. So let me call this section one and a half. That is, in this case, we can think of the Betty cohomology as the drum cohomology. Let's say with the we are working with C coefficients. So we suppose in our setting the pair G and X form a Schumacher datum. Okay. Then local asymmetric space we defined before are exactly the complex point of the corresponding Schumacher variety. So let me take a compatification of the Schumacher variety for the moment, which I don't, spe don't specify fuller. But here, uh, compatification means uh, embedding of the Schumacher variety into a smooth projective variety as a dense open subset, such that. Um, so this compatification is smooth projective. And I also assume that the boundary is a divisor with normal crossings. Now the algebraic drum theorem tells us after base exchange to C, the Betty cohomology is isomorphic to the hypercohomology of the drum complex of this variety. And I can push forward this drum complex to the compatification I took just now. So this are the drum complex of the open Schmer variety. And I can also replace this push forward drum complex with the sub complex consisting of forms with at most log growth along the boundary. OK, so now we have the spectral sequence for the hypercohomology, which converged to the drum cohomology of the Schmer variety. And Fontaine's BGG sequence is just a special case. OK, so. I forget to say that this, in this case, like things should also work for local systems, but we just take trivial coefficient for the instance. And 
in the trivial coefficient case, plotting BGG spectral sequence is just a special case of the spectral sequence for this hypercohomology when the compatification here is taken to a toroidal compatification. So note that such co toroidal compatibility is non-canonical. So I specify some combinatorial data to fix it. And then we have the spectral sequence whose E1 page are cohomology of these vector bundles um, omega log boundary converging to the drum cohomology of Nishimura rise. Okay, and those when writing it, there are like choice of the toroidal compatibility here, but actually it turns out that uh, this cohomology are independent of my choice of my compatibility. And hence, the spectral sequence also doesn't. Moreover, for any transition map between Schumacher varieties of different level, um, they all we can always take appropriate toroidal compatifications so that the transition map extend to map between toroidal compatifications. So this, well, this cohomology group actually form a direct system. And we can also like formulate it as their hack actions <coughs> on the E1 term, and hence hack action on the spectral sequence. There are also hack actions on the right-hand side. And we can verify that the spectral sequence is actually hack equivalent. OK, so now if we, well, so if we can express the left hand side, this coherent cohomology, also as well, fixed part of relatively algebra cohomology of certain often free representations, then um, we get an alternative approach to see the automorphy for the etal cohomology of Schumacher varieties. So, um, but like this actually fits into a more general framework that is this vector bundle on the Toroidal compatification is a special case of automorphic vector bundles, canonical extensions to toroidal compatifications of Schumacher varieties. So we refer to those cohomology as coherent cohomology of Schumacher varieties, and we first introduce the general notions. So coherent. Homology of So first of all, let's introduce automorphic vector bundles. We let beta to be the Borel immersion where in the right hand side this PH is a complex parabolic subgroup of G which is determined by the compact subgroup K of G of R and the right hand side here is exactly in a compact dual 
of a connected component of X. So this Borel immersion is a holomorphic immersion, which is GI invariant. And I let V to be a finite dimensional algebraic representation of pH. Then it's well known that these representations are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the G of C homogeneous vector bundles on the right hand side. That is the homogeneous vector bundle associated to V is to be defined in this way. Okay, so this is G of C homogeneous vector bundle. And now I can define our outmorphic vector bundle. It is so this is our outmorphic vector bundle. So let me just give one example. That is when the representation V is the piece vetch product of G mod out by the Lie algebra pH. Then the ultimate vector bundle is exactly in the sheaf of holomorphic P forms on the schema right. And next, let's introduce canonical extensions of these ultimate vector bundles. But we just restrict to the case where the toroidal compatification is SNC, that is, it's smooth, and the boundary is a divisor with normal crossing. So, So instead of the uh, like the traditional way to define them, we use a method that works especially in this case. So for that we need to define some space of functions. That is for uh, any open subset in this double quotient, I define the space C infinity DMG to be in subspace of functions such that. So note that this is actually a finite union of the real points of G quotient out by congruent subgroups. So the <coughs> vectors in the, well, in the Lie algebra of G enhance any element in the universal enveloping algebra acting on this space by right differentiation. And OK. So for any element in the universal enveloping algebra and any finite adelic point of the group, there exists a function in a coordinate ring of G over R such that df translated by y is bounded by f dy, wherever it's defined. So dmg here stands for like all the derivatives of f has moderate growth. So now, You can view the following definition as either a proposition or a definition. So we let this 
k sigma to be the SNC toroidal quantification of the Schumer variety, and we denote by SH k sigma is complex points. And we denote by pi the composition of the natural projection from this double quotient with the embedding. OK, so then on this compatification. The shiftification of the falling pre shift Sending each open set U to well um, P H K C V turns out well so let me say this is called the canonical extension of V is a holomorphic vector bundle. Extending the that is its restriction to the open Schumer variety is isomorphic to V. Where? Here? So no, this, this is V. No, no, I'm asking about the species. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And uh, this should be pi inverse of u. And what I wrote just now is the, from the global section of the pre shift. Okay. So. In the definition of this DMG space, where is little f in the condition? Where is f? Yeah. Uh, sorry, this is f. So, okay. So I should remark that, like uh, as I said just now, this is not the original definition of the canonical extension, and canonical extension can actually be defined for any toroidal compatification in any automorphic vector bundle. So they are first defined for fully decomposed automorphic vector bundle. That is in the case where in the representation v factors through a levy of the parabolic pH. And well, I guess uh, SNC toroidal compatification by Monfort. And then Harris formulated the definition, the general definition for canonical extensions and show their existence. Also, I, sh I should have remarked here that here, I, in the way I define automorphic vector bundle is like a is as a homomorphic vector bundle, but it turns out that they are an analytification of algebraic vector bundles defined over a number field determined by the representation V. And their canonical extensions are defined over are analytification of algebraic vector bundles defined over the same field. Okay, so 
Again, in a previous example, now we have the canonical extension of p differentials are exactly differentials with log poles along the boundary. OK, so. Now we consider the coherent cohomology of these canonical extensions. So first of all, it's clear that they are, again, finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And also, it turns out they are independent of the choice of the toroidal compatification. So, Like the um, and the morphisms between con between toroidal compatifications give rise to hack actions on this cohomology of canonical extensions. And finally, most importantly, like in some cases, people now have already associated GAR representations to this cohomology. We are congruence. So like it, it follows find the question that if these Galar representations are automorphic. So like out of similar motivation, it's very desirable to express this coherent cohomology in terms of relatively algebra cohomology of automorphic representations. So give rise to Galar representations. in some cases. <coughs> and the main theorem of this talk is that they are equivalent isomorphisms. And shy. Between this coherent cohomology and PK cohomology of the space of automorphic forms, tensor V. OK, so so the proof of the result divides into three parts, that is, We can first connect this coherent cohomology with PHK cohomology of the space of DMG functions. And then I can. Replace this space of function with a subspace C infinity U and G, which I'm going to define right now. And finally, we can replace 
this space C infinity UM G with automorphic forms. Okay. So here in the space C infinity UMG a function such that there exists a function f in the coordinate ring of g over r independent of d and y such that for any d and finite static point y, there exists a constant c d y such that d of f is bounded by this constant multiple of the function. So we see that the difference between c infinity umg and c infinity dmg is that uh, the function here with respect to all the derivative of f should be the same. And it's just the scalar that changes. So this umg stands for uniformly moderate growth. OK, so any question? I'm sorry, I don't understand what it looks like. So capital F belongs to O? o so o, o of um, like g base change to r. So, so it's like G base change to the real numbers. What, what is the OGR of the? Um, so <laughs> maybe I should say. Um, so it's just a coordinate function with R coefficients. So, so, so li this is the same as like. Uh, there exists a power of the Hilbert-Schmidt norm, since the square of the Hilbert-Schmidt norm lies in the coordinate ring. And on the other hand, any, any function in the coordinate ring is bounded by a multiple of a power of the Hilbert-Schmidt norm. So it's just the, uh, just the traditional uniform moderate growth condition that I wrote it in this way. Uh, so, so let us, so let us, yes, G is the uh, algebraic group. So, and so I take its coordinate ring. So I still don't understand what this O is. Can you say? Oh, oh, so O yeah. is the co coordinate ring, right? What is O index GR? Index GR? So, so this is a, uh, well, this is a variety of. I know what the R is, but I know what O G R is so so. Uh, let me say G R is the spectrum of O G R. <laughs> so this is a linear algebraic group. So like, um, but uh, then the F is not positive or anything. So, uh, so I wrote there exists an F. Yeah. So you can always take the square, right? You are bounded, bounding the function by a polynomial function which is not positive. No, I, I mean, there exists a coordinate function which bonds f. So of course, a priori, will take f to be positive. <laughs> so, OK. Um, OK. So, OK, so I was going to remark that um, this procedure is exactly parallel to the proof of Frankel's theorem. And for each of the isomorphisms here, there are some different situations to deal with. So among these, the most involving and innovative part is the first isomorphism. So let me slightly explain it. So um, to get the first isomorphism, we actually show that there is a cross solution of the canonical extension as a holomorphic vector bundle by 
the infinity modulus where <coughs> I is the justification of the pre shift Now we send each open set U to home K I PH mod K C infinity pi DMG pi inverse U tensor V. Okay, so um let me see if I have time. So I still have some time. So this essentially involves that expressing this trivialization of pre shift under um, so under local coordinate on a toroidal compactification. So you see that like the um, the growth conditions cutting out this subspace infinity DMG is global by the elements in a universal enveloping algebra. So like it eventually reduced to an estimation of the differential operators in the Lie algebra of G. So an estimate of their coefficients and their local toroidal co uh, coordinates. Okay, and after we establish the first isomorphism, we use a regularization argument to replace this C infinity DMG with C infinity UMG. And the advantage of C infinity UMG over C infinity DMG is that this space of functions admit very nice spectral decomposition. So roughly speaking, this space is generated by pseudo Eisenstein series and their residues. So, um, so Franco is able to carry out a very delicate study of its module as a, of its structure as a GK module and prove an a cyclicity result, which enable us to replace this space with the space of automorphic forms in both our case and the case of GK modules. So, So yes, so since they are modules over the, yeah, so they, are yeah, fine. they are fine, yes. So therefore they are a cyclic solution. Okay. Oh, okay, so that is uh, actually, I can express them under local coordinates and I check that like all, so it's restriction to a small neighborhood of a point actually consists of on a, well, s smooth functions. So, so that is, you can see that these shifts are actually sub shifts of the push forward of, well, um, the tensor product of an ultimate effect bundle with zero <coughs> i forms. So, in a case when i equals zero, this is, and v is trivial, you see that this is. Uh, so the shift of smooth functions on the compactification is a sub shift of that push forward, and yes, so so like we show that i zero trivial representation contains c infinity, and all i v i is a module over i c zero.
OK, so instead of going into more details in a proof, I'd like to like, give some questions which now make sense after we have our result. So we know that the space of automorphic forms admits a decomposition with respect to associated classes of Q parabolic subgroups of G. So okay, so Combining both of Frankel's theorem and our theorem, we get decomposition of the cohomology of local systems and, co and coherent cohomology with respect to this associated class of parabolics. So now the question is, these decompositions are constructed over the complex numbers, while both this cohomology has rational structure. In the first case is, well, so let's say if the representation E is defined over Q, then it has a Q rational structure. And in the second case, it has a rational structure over uh, the field where the, the ultimate effect bundle is defined. So Decompositions. The question is whether this decomposition is rational. And like in the first case, if we consider the model curve case, then we see that um, this, rational, this rational maybe is actually equivalent to manning Greenfield theorem. So this can be viewed as an attempted generalization of manning Greenfield theorem. And we have the positive results. That is, this is true when G is general linear group over a number field, which is due to Cosell and Franco. OK, so I suspect the argument goes in the same in the second case when the Schumacher right is a Hilbert model right, but I haven't checked the have, haven't actually checked the argument. So actually, I'm, I'm not sure. Like in which cases we should actually expect these rationalities to be true. So i rather write this as a question rather than a conjecture. So, um, well, so I didn't <laughs> expect that to be 10 minutes left, so I can actually give more details about the proof. But uh, it seems like with all those details, this is as much as I plan to say today. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. Maybe. Okay.